I have a, a really good question from our brother William, who's, who's out of cyberspace. He's kind of feeling a, a, a little uh, uh, shy about coming on and asking the question, so I'm going to ask it for him. Okay. Okay. His question is, uh, how do I stay out of social structure mindset? I'm 46, and it's all I've known most of my life. I'm so grateful for narrative and the perspective it gives. My struggle is that my programming is social structure. I default there, thinking about my personal dollars and comfortability, even though I know my true peace will only come by accepting the governance structure and working to build. And he says, uh, how do I stay and grow in governance mindset when social structure is all I've known? I feel narrative in my soul and I'm uplifted. The next thing I know, I'm back to looking at things through social structure lens. Mm. I feel like a lot of people probably feeling the same way. I was taking notes. It's what was his name again? Uh, William William P. Brother brother, William. Yes. I would just say real quick, brother, that that is going to be our fate. Meaning that we're never going to be able to get rid of that. Because, and here's, the, again, the, the critical distinction in, in the Africana Studies framework that we developed in the mid-aughts, mid-2000s, 2005, 6, 7, that we vetted and tried out with our Freedom School students that I brought to Howard and really vetted with our African state students and have continued over the years to think and rethink and rethinking up to and including now with narrative and Nubia as we rethink about it. Um, the simple fact of the matter is the fundamental difference between the social structure question, who are Africans to other people, and the governance structure question, who are we to each other, is to separate out the, for lack of a better term, political framework or even ideological framework so that the questions we ask in either of those categories allow us to be able to see what's in our best interest at any, any given moment in time. So I guess what I'm saying is we're always thinking in the social structure framework because we live in a social structure and the major difference between social structure and governance structure in that regard is all a social structure is is the rules of the society you find yourself in. The history of the society, the rules of the society. So when you think of social structure, don't think of it as something that hasn't always existed. There's always a social structure. The reason we separate that from governance structure has everything to do with the last 500 years or so. Meaning that becomes a separate category in terms of our contemporary experience, the last 500 years or so, as a result of our most recent encounter with what we now call race and racial oppression. What we didn't want to do is have our lives, have us think about our lives, living our lives all the time obsessed with race. That's what leads to massive confusion. That's what lead, leads to people doing incredible scholarship, making incredible art and music and culture, and then dumping it into this absurd framework to say, you know, in our country, we have built no jazz as America's classical music. Okay, see, that's just confusion. Jazz, just confusion. Jazz is a label given to Africana cultural meaning making made in the context of an American social structure that comes out of Africana engagement with each other, governance. Changing that language allows us to, while we live in the social structure and can never leave our minds, it gives us a place to stand in that social, in that social structure. Let me see if I can use a different metaphor, uh, William, to make the point. We're having this conversation in English. That means we bear the stamp with every living, breathing moment and second of our communication of the social structure. This garbage can language, this car crash between Latin based languages and the languages, Germanic based languages, this car crash, which is why the grammar is all jacked up. And whether you're in the Germanic languages or the Latin languages, the stuff in English don't make much sense because like a Reese's peanut, it's like the Reese's peanut butter cups of the Western languages crashed up together. Right. And and. We're having a conversation in English. We mean the social structure is literally in our pre-verbal thought. And at, at the level of creativity, all uh, thought is pre-verbal. We're thinking before we speak, which is why we often struggle with the words. Goes back to that first conversation we're having about the woo with Kilolo. You know, when you don't have the facility of language, you turn to metaphor. And sometimes when you can't turn to metaphor, you just turn to, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hoping you can force somebody to feel what you feel. But the conversation we're having now is in English, which means the social structure is there. And that social structure is always present. Now, moving through the world with an awareness that there is a governance set of questions, 
who are we to each other? Who are we to each other? Allows us to recognize that we have a place to stand that isn't shaped by the social structure that is also always with us. In other words, there are some people, you know, some black people who almost exist as a figment of white imagination. They don't have a governance category. So that when you encounter them, they have no special affinity for you because you are of African descent. They're not mad at you. They just don't feel any deep connection. And there's often a sense that when we encounter people like that, we wonder why that is. Is it because of where you were born, where you were raised? Did you reject it? Did you never know it was there to embrace? But clearly, whatever their journey through life has been, it's been a thing that to those of us who have some sense of awareness, it becomes a thing that is odd to us. And I've heard people say this often about African people who are born in the continent of Africa, raised in Africa, as distinct from Africans from the United States. And sometimes even Africans in the United States as distinct from Africans in the Caribbean or, or, or maybe Latin America, which is an African from the United States almost presumes other African people, no matter where they're from, will have some form of race affinity, cultural affinity, connection. And when we encounter Africans who don't, you say, well, that person's from Nigeria, that person's from Ghana, that person's from Kenya. You say, oh, okay, so they don't necessarily see you as black or they don't see themselves as black or they see you as an American Negro, which is different. And that is true often. But what I've also found is if you communicate a sense of governance, if you communicate a sense of openness, they will connect more often than not, overwhelmingly more often than not, with the sense of shared community. And it isn't often racial. What I'm saying, William, is that, and I'll give you this quick example on the way to the, to the example I'm making while I'm saying this. Again, social structure is always there, like the language we speak, English, in this case, right now. Governance structure, by asking the question who we are to each other, if you go into any relationship to any African person, with that question in mind, you're always looking for connections. You're always looking for connections, which is why I say there have been more times than I can count when I've been in conversation with continental Africans, Africans from the Caribbean, Africans from Latin America, where I've gone into the conversation, not with a social structure approach to blackness, because who we are to other people is black people. No, I'm going with a governance structure concept of, of being African, meaning what? Ways of knowing movement and memory, cultural meaning making, science and technology. So if I encounter an African who would be looking at me like, okay, you're African-American, I'm Nigerian. I don't go with them with, okay, you are African, I'm African-American. I come with, oh, tell me your name, brother. Oh, my name is Olofemi. Oh, wow. I don't speak much Yoruba, but I know Olu means God, right? Yes, God. I see, you know what's always found interesting about your language? There are so many people with names that connect to God. I said, that's how I knew that black people in America, we must have come from Africa because we always talk about God too. Really, brother? Yes, you know, I found that true as well. Immediately, what could have been an African and African-American conversation, but that division is from the social structure. I'm entering from ways of knowing. How do African people think about the world? This question of divinity, this question of spirituality is at the center of so many of the different African cultures, including the culture of the diaspora, that if you come at it from culture, the governance structure is always there. And then you begin to commiserate. You know what I'm saying? Then the brother says something or the sister says something like this. You know, I've always wanted to know this. Why do you African-Americans allow these white people to teach you? And the, but now I'm comfortable. And now we're having a governance structure category about the social structure. But what was what we got rid of at first was the idea that the social structure has divided us in a way by race that we can't talk to each other. No, we've put the social structure on the other side. We are now talking in a governance framework, which means we're going to argue, we're going to debate, but we're going to enter that conversation as members of a common humanity that is of African descent. And I think, William, that's the answer to it, brother. You ain't got to get rid of it. It's going to be in your head. You just got to control it and walk through the world on your own terms. That's all. And we're here with you.